Okay, so today I'm on a beast of an electric bike. This is the Ehora Romeo Pro. So this bike can go around like 34 miles per hour using pedal assist, just a beast, but it has a massive battery here that I'm putting to the test today because this entire review video will be inside of a distance test where I'm just using the throttle only. And I should be going around maybe like 12 miles one way and then also 12 miles back. So we'll see how the battery holds up. And so my odometer is set to zero and we are starting off with 80% battery life. But yeah, I'm starting from the St. Louis Arch and we're going to end up at the old Chain of Rocks Bridge. So let me hop on this bike and just get this thing started. All right, so we have a helicopter landing right there in front of me. So this is a good time to go ahead and start this test. So yeah, this Ehora Romeo Pro is part of two bikes in the Romeo family. So you have the regular Romeo that has a price of $2,199. And then this Romeo Pro has a price of $2,000. $299 and both of these bikes do come in three colors so you have gray green and also the black that I have here now the major difference between these two bikes really comes down to the motor so the Romeo has an 1000 watt brushless hub motor in the rear wheel and the Romeo Pro which I'm on right now has a 1200 watt brushless hub motor in the rear wheel and for the Romeo Pro I know that the motor does peak out at 1400 watts and so this motor does allow you to get a faster speed so the Romeo Pro can get up to around 32 miles per hour just using the throttle but if you do use pedal assist you can get up to around 34 miles per hour or so and with the regular Romeo you are looking at hovering around the 28 mile per hour limit there so still fast but not as fast as this Romeo Pro and then the last major difference will be with the overall range of these bikes so with this Romeo Pro I can get between 70 and 76 miles just using the throttle only and so that's crazy but if I do want to use the pedal assist I'm looking at between like 104 and 112 miles of range and so that's really good but actually with the cheaper Romeo you do get a little bit more range and that's because it does have a motor that does have a, a lower output so you're looking at adding a few more miles to the range both ways with the throttle and pedal assist with the Romeo, but it's not like a big difference. It's like three or four miles, so nothing really drastic. But overall, these both are gonna be some really good bikes, but this Romeo Pro is gonna be the one that's made for those people who want that speed and really want a bike that acts like a motorcycle. Now, you can already tell that this is a big boy bike. This thing has some size to it. And weight-wise, this thing does weigh 124 pounds, actually 124.6 pounds to be technically uh, right there. But that's including the battery. But if you do take the battery off, you will be losing around 27.6 pounds. So that's gonna be convenient if you are trying to load this big boy up on a bike rack or something. But yeah, the frame is carbon steel. It's very robust. It does feel durable. It doesn't feel like this thing is gonna, you know, cheapen out or break down over time. So I've only had this for about a couple of weeks now. So I can't say the, the exact longevity of it, but it does feel very well built. I love the overall design of it, especially like this little cage around the battery. And then also you do have some really good tight cable management up front. It's definitely up to my standards. And then you have this really big headlight. This is a motorcycle style headlight and this headlight does have two different modes a high beam and a low beam to choose from and then on the back you will find a tail light that does double as a brake light and then you also do get some turn signals in that same brake light as well and so the controls for the headlight and the turn signals are all up here on the left hand side of the handlebars and then also below those you will be finding the button for the electronic horn and it's a very high pitched horn, but it'll definitely let people know that you're coming. Now, one thing about the turn signals, which I always bring up as my biggest gripe is that they don't have any type of indicator on the display or any type of audible sound. So you have to remember to turn them off if you are like waiting at a red light for a while. And after you make your turn, I just still sometimes forget to turn them off. So I wish it had at least some type of audible sound. Now this bike does have some big 26 by four inch CST tires. And if you do want to go off road, these tires will give you some cushion, a little bit of traction, not the deepest treading on a bike. So, you know, this bike can do some off-roading. It can do some paved paths and stuff. I'm not really looking at this as like any type of like mountain bike or anything. It's just really too big for that. But if you do want to have some fun and get out in the dirt and grass and stuff, this bike can handle it, especially with this powerful motor to be able to push this thing through. And to also help out with the ride quality, you do have dual suspension on this bike. So 
On the front, you will find a front suspension fork that has 100 millimeters of travel. And then on the back, you will find a spring air valve shock that does have 50 millimeters of travel. And both of these suspensions are adjustable. So with the front, you do have preload and also you can unlock it and lock it on out. And then with the rear suspension, again, you can adjust you know, how much cushion that you have with that. But to really round off how this bike feels to ride is going to be this leather seat. So this leather seat does have some memory foam inside of it. So it's really, really good cushion, feels so good. But also this isn't adjustable though. So I know some people really, really love to have an adjustable seat that you can like raise up and down, but you can't do that with this bike. But for me being six feet tall, I'm in a really good comfortable riding position, not leaning forward too much, not leaning back too much, exactly how I personally like it. But if you just have to have an adjustable seat, this company also sells their Juliet bike, which is very similar to this bike, big battery, nice speed as well, but that does have an adjustable seat for you. But for this Romeo Pro, they say that riders in the height range of five, seven and six four should be comfortable on this bike and then also this bike can support up to 330 pounds and there is an option to add a rear rack on this bike but you have to do that separately it does not come with it but it does have the uh, the mounting points already on this bike and now i'm on a very nice straightaway right now and i am around 30 miles per hour now i'm at 31 miles per hour and we're getting it baby so look i weigh 220 pounds i have about 15 pounds of camera gear and stuff in my back and we are cruising, cruising, cruising. And so I love the acceleration of this bike too. It's very fast off the line. And you do get hydraulic disc brakes with this bike that do come in at 180 millimeters and we're gonna test them out right now. And I didn't even slam on them and I almost tipped over there, but yeah, these brakes are nice and quiet, very efficient. And you need that for a bike of this size and weight. And you know what, on our way to the bridge, let me go ahead and go off road here a little bit too. And so this is a very steep hill. And yeah, now we're really getting into it. <laughs> you can tell that, you know, my voice is shaking a lot here, but this is very, very rough grass, but this bike is just eating through it. I'm just hopping on and off of the throttle and a little dip there and we made it through. All right, that's fun. Let's get back on the trail. And the handling of this bike is really nice for its size. I feel very in control and the weight really does kind of plant this bike down to the ground. And so like, I'm just getting it right now. And so look, I would typically ride this bike on the street. This is a bike that's really made for keeping up with cars and stuff, but taking it out on the bike trail, you're gonna get some dirty looks, <laughs> but uh, this thing is just very fun to ride almost practically anywhere. So really, really good, comfortable ride. And also for pedaling too, I am gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna pedal just a little bit, but the pedaling experience is not that bad because my knees don't come up that high. So for this riding position, it feels good for me being six feet tall. So if I do want to use the pedal assist again to get that maximum range, I can do that on this bike. Now let's talk about the controls of this bike. So on the right hand side, you will find a thumb throttle, which is one of the more unique thumb throttles that I've seen. Most of the time they are a little bit thicker, more paddle like this one is a little bit skinnier, but it's been really good to use. And then next to that, you will find the controls for the seven speed Shimano shifter. So even though I'm not really using the seven speed derailleur on this bike, you do have that on this bike as an option but then also on the left hand side you will find the controls for the four inch color lcd display nice and bright nice colors I always like a good color screen on an e-bike and that will be showing you all your relevant information and stuff all right so a quick little battery check we are at 75 percent and we are a little over 7.2 miles right now so we uh what did we drop 15 percent but uh, seven miles in and yeah, I'm still confident that we're gonna get there <laughs> with plenty of range left on this bad boy. Yeah, it looks like we have some wild turkeys up here. I'm a little hungry, but I'm not gonna try to catch you guys. Sorry, sorry to scare you. Um, I'll see you for Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, I'm joking. All right, so now we have a nice little downhill underneath this bridge. And again, the handling is so nice. I'm not scraping my pedals at all either if I do have like one of my pedals down when I am taking a turn like that. So that is nice and tight squeeze here, but we made it through and luckily no one else was coming, but this bike does take up a little bit of space <laughs> on the bike trails. Another turn and a little bit of a squeeze and boom, here we go. Now a little bit of water here, but this bike does come with front and rear plastic fenders, low bridge, boom. And we got a roadblock here. You think I can slide underneath there? No, I'm not doing any uh, fast and furious here. I'm gonna go off on the grass and go behind it. No one else is coming and then back on the trail. All right, so here's the hill coming up. We're going into it at around 28 
29 miles per hour and boom here we go and we're gonna lose a few miles per hour here we're dropping down to 26 but we're still steadily getting up this thing so this bike does have 90 newton meters of torque on this thing as well so good hill climbing good takeoff off of the uh, starting line and then also i think this can climb hills rated between like 30 and 40 degrees or so but yeah we got up that hill with no problem and now a little bit of downhill testing out the hydraulic disc brakes a little bit more but whoo nice ride all right so we're pulling up to the entrance to the old chain of rocks bridge route 66 rest area and they are redoing this part right here to make it really nice for tourists and it's going to be like a nice little park and stuff but anyway sharp turn and then now we're going to enter this cool bridge a lot of history on this bridge and some cool little looking out points and all right so we got to the midway point here let me pull over to the side and just look at this view you can't beat it i mean you can beat it but <laughs> this is a really good bridge so now i'm gonna give the uh, bike a little bit of a rest here and just take this all in it looks so nice here i forgot exactly the history on that little kind of tower right there but uh anyway it's pretty cool hopefully one day i can make it out there oh i actually should bring my drone out here for a cool shot that would be pretty sweet but let's do a check up here on the battery so we're at 60 percent battery so we lost around 20 percent and then we are at 12.1 miles so still plenty of battery to go with this bad boy and speaking of the battery let's talk about some of the specs of this beast of a battery so this is a 48 volt 60 amp hour battery and you can use one of the two included keys to unlock the battery and now you can take it out using the built-in handle at the top and so you can take this inside to charge it because this is a big bike that you might not want to bring inside of your place uh, but also you can leave the battery on the bike and charge it that way and so this does come with a six amp fast charger and it will take between eight and ten hours to get this thing fully charged up which is actually pretty respectable for this size of a battery so there you have it but okay so it is time for me to head back i've been out here filming a little bit longer than what i really wanted to but it is starting to get dark so i need to get on back and also my uh mount here for my insta 360 is a little loose so i'm not really going to be talking a lot on my way back so enjoy a little bit of footage here and then we'll see you back at the st louis arch All right, so I finally made it. It is nighttime, but I am here. And the final total is going to be, we're at 23.9 miles. So we'll say 24 miles. And also we're at 36% battery. So we lost 45% battery on this trip. Now, fun fact though, I did this entire trip earlier this morning, but I had to redo it because my audio was messed up in some of my videos. So I had to do this all over again. But in the morning time, I did the same route and also a little bit more double backing to get some of the B-roll, but I only lost 30% battery on that particular test. Now, one difference between that test and right now was the fact that I did unplug the headlight in the morning time so i don't know how much you know that's going to be drawing from the battery but and that might be the difference here but i also started at 100 percent battery this morning too so i don't know if that played any type of role in this but no matter what you're going to get a lot of range out of this bike especially if you do use the pedal assist so in general this is going to be an on-road bike for me i'm going to be riding this next to a lot of cars and stuff but this is an all-around really good bike now there are a couple of things that i would like to see in the next version one is that this is using a cadence sensor for the pedaling but yeah i would like to see a torque sensor on this thing and then to some audible sound for the turn signals would definitely be welcome but besides those couple of things this bike is very solid so i'll drop a link down below it should be an affiliate link so if you do use it that does help support this channel so that will be down in the description of this video but like always i do want to thank you for watching this video give this video a like if you did like it but i will catch you later peace